Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome back to our Learn to Crochet series. We are in week two of the series and today we're going to be making this beautiful, easy beginner cowl. This cowl is going to show you how to, we're going to continue working the double crochet stitches like we did for our scarf last week, but today we're going to be learning how to crochet in the round. So you don't need to do, have a seam um, and it's just a seamless tube that we're going to be making, which is a really handy skill for lots of different patterns. So this is a very pretty, super fast wearable cowl that you can make in just a short amount of time. So we're going to start with a starting chain and we're going to be joining with a slip stitch to create this ring. And then we're going to be building up from there and I'm going to show you how to do all of that. So again, like I said, this is part two of our Learn to Crochet series. And then next week, we're going to be continuing on with our ribbed hat, a simple ribbed pom-pom hat. Last week, if you missed it, we're going, we made a fringe scarf. So check out that project below. I'll put the link down below for that. Now, the finished scarf of this measures about 36 inches around, and it has a height of about 11 inches. Now, you can change your starting chain to give you a much wider cowl, and you can simply work more rows to make a taller cowl. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to measure as you go along. You'll also need a 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook, and your yarn. We're gonna be using a yarn called Dreamy by Red Heart. Now, if you're joining us for the whole Learn to Crochet series, uh, we're going to be using this yarn for all the projects in the series, and this is a beautiful aqua color. It's called aqua. As a matter of fact, it does come in dye lots. If you're not familiar with that, that is uh, when they're manufacturing the yarn, it's kind of like the batch of yarn that they dye at the same time. So if you're using multiple balls of this um, and you need more than what I'm uh, recommending here, just make sure that the dye lots match. Now let's talk a little bit about substituting yarn. That's always important uh, when you want to crochet a project and you're not sure if you can't find the yarn or if you want to substitute yarn with something you may already have, we're going to be using the Red Heart Dreamy and the Aqua if you want to replicate what I'm doing. So if you spin back around to the yarn label, look for something that's a medium or a four on the yarn weight scale and something that recommends the 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook and you'll be just fine. This is machine wash and dry, which is really nice, um, easy care kind of project. This is a large ball of yarn. We're only gonna be using about half of this ball of yarn. Um, this is 466 yards, 426 meters. But save your leftovers because you can use it for another project in this series. We're gonna be doing a little throw blanket. So you can use that for your blanket as well. I also wanted to say as a side note, if you're having trouble finding the Dreamy yarn, a yarn that is the same uh, 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook is Red Heart with Love. That's a wonderful yarn I use all the time. That would be a great substitute. So let's get started on our cowl. Okay, so what we're gonna do to begin, now as promised, we are going to learn a new skill and kind of build up our skill sets with each uh, part of this series. So last week we did the scarf where we crocheted flat. Today we're gonna to be exploring crocheting in the round, okay? And it's gonna be super easy. All right, so what we're gonna do is put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop. Reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Same thing we did with our scarf last week, but we're gonna do a chain and then we're going to join it and work up. So we're gonna create a giant ring and then work upward, okay? So our starting chain is gonna be 80 chains, okay? So let me just zoom in a tiny bit so you can see a little bit better. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around your hook, bring it through the loop, that's one chain. Let's do that again. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the loop, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. I'm gonna pick up speed a little bit. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. Now I'm going to stop for a sec and just get a little bit more yarn to work with here. And one thing I wanted to say as a side note is that I really love this yarn because it has like a fluffy coziness, but you're still going to be able to see your stitches, which is really important when you're starting. You don't want to pick something that's too... Um, fluffy and doesn't give you enough visibility, but this has just enough of a little bit of a fluffy halo around it. Okay, so we've run 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, whoops, back up, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, and 80. Okay, so here is our starting chain, and it looks very, very long, but if you think about it, joining here and, and putting that over your head and wearing it on your neck, it, it, it makes more sense when you think about it that way. Another side note I wanted to make is that a lot of times when we're learning how to crochet, our starting chain is super tight because our tension is a little bit tighter when we're learning. Our hands uh, aren't used to making the stitches and manipulating the yarn and, and your hands can even get a little bit stiff or sore when you're learning because you're not used, you don't have the, like a, I guess you could say the muscle memory when you're learning. So if you're having trouble Try going up a hook size for the starting chain only, and then go back down to the 6.5 millimeter K hook for the rest of your piece, and that helps so much. That is a very common question I get about the starting chain being too tight. When your chain is loose enough, now you don't want it to be too loose either, but when your chain is loose enough, you can see all those chains that you need to work into, and it's, it makes things so much easier on yourself. Okay, so try that if you're having a little bit of trouble. Okay, so now we're ready to join to create the ring that we'll be working our stitches into, okay? So what we're going to do is join in the chain farthest from our hook, okay? So what we want to do is be careful not to twist it around. I like to kind of hold it and kind of drag my hand down it, uh, almost like tape, and make sure that the the piece is nice and flat and it's not twisting up. That could just really make things more difficult for you later, okay? So I like to just kind of run my hand down the length of the chain, get everything nice and situated, okay? So now what we're gonna do is then that very first chain you made, that chain farthest from the hook, we're going to join with a slip stitch to create our cow, the very beginnings of our cow. So insert the hook in that chain farthest from the hook. Now you're going to wrap the yarn around your hook, bring it through that loop. Now you'll have two loops on your hook. You're next going to bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And this is going to be the bottom of our cow. And we're going to work upward, okay? So it's kind of like the foundation of our cow. This tail, we're not going to worry about right this second. Um, I'll show you what to do with that in just a second. Okay, so what we need to do next is get the height that we need for our stitches. So we're going to chain three. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three. Now, if you joined us last week, you might guess if we do a starting chain of three, or uh, yeah, a starting chain of three, there we're going to be doing double crochet stitches. Different stitches have different heights and you need different heights of chains to accommodate that, okay? Now, let's talk about this tail. What you can do, you can do one of two things. If you don't feel like dealing with it right now, you can simply push it out of the way and weave it in later. If you want to weave it in as you go, which is really nice and saves yourself a little bit of work at the end, hold that tail 
along the edge as you work your stitches and it will weave it in as you go along. Okay, so try that and see if that works for you. Okay, so locate that first chain. Now see this first opening here where this knot is and everything, that's where we joined. So we're gonna go to the first chain that we see and work a double crochet. Remember, hold that tail along the edge. If it's too much when you're just starting out, if it's too cumbersome to worry about the tail, worry about the stitch, worry about the chain, don't worry about the tail. Just kind of take the tail and push it out of the way and worry about it later. If you can handle it and accommodate it, by all means, weave that thing in as, as you go along because it makes life easier. Okay, so to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around your hook, insert it into that chain, wrap the yarn around the hook again, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap the yarn around your hook again, bring it through the first two loops, wrap the yarn around your hook, and bring it through the last two loops. That's the double crochet stitch. And I uh, held that tail along the edge as I worked that stitch, and now it's been incorporated. But we're gonna do that a couple times just to get that tail, it, uh, once isn't really enough, okay? Let's make our next double crochet. Wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop, three loops are on the hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Now some of you seasoned crocheters out there, I am gonna pick up speed in just a few minutes, so just bear with me here. Okay, let's keep holding the tail, work another double crochet. Just to give you a little spoiler alert, we're gonna work double crochets all the way around. So if this is a new stitch to you, you're gonna get lots and lots of practice, okay? All right, work a double crochet into the next chain. Now if you wanna see this double crochet stitch slower, uh, back up the video and you can watch that part as many times as you need to, okay? I'm still holding that tail along the edge as I work, just as a side note. I'm gonna incorporate that tail for a while here. All right, work a double crochet into the next stitch. Work a double crochet into the next stitch. My, t my yarn's kind of following me around here. Work a double crochet into the next, I'm sorry, I keep saying stitch, I mean chain. Work a double crochet into the next chain is what I'm trying to say here. Still holding that tail along the edge. Now the fuzz of this yarn kind of helps keep it in place, so that's helpful. That's a little bonus there. Work a double crochet in the next chain. So I'm gonna keep working double crochets in every chain all the way around. And now when we get towards the end of this round, we come all the way back around and we're getting close to where we began, we're gonna rejoin and I'm gonna show you both how to finish off this round and transition to the next round, okay? All right, I'm just working that last double crochet of our round. And now what we're gonna do is join to close the round. So do you remember that uh, three chains that we did at the beginning of the round? Just join at the topmost chain. So one, two, three. Now they look like little V's here. So one V, two V, three V's. And we're gonna join with a slip stitch. So insert your hook into that third chain up, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook and round one is complete, okay? So we have a nice little beginning of a cowl happening here. Now before we move on, I wanted to show you something. Remember that, that end, that tail that we wove in as we went along? You can trim this. See, we, we wove it in all the way around till there was just a little bit left. So give it a little tug and trim and that'll just kind of disappear. And now let's move on to round two. Now round two is the round that we'll repeat for the rest of our cowl. And it's very easy, same stitches. We're keeping the stitches nice and simple for this series. And I love simple stitches. You can really cruise through a project quickly. So if you need to kind of whip something up for a gift or you really just wanna spend an evening and make something for yourself, these are great projects for things like this. Okay, so what we wanna do is chain three. One two, three. Okay, so locate the first stitch. Now you're right over top of your chain three from the previous round. So that next crochet, double crochet you see rather, is gonna have a little stitch at the top. See that little loop and the post? Work a double crochet into that first stitch. 
just like that, a double crochet into the next stitch, and in the next stitch, and we're just going to do this all the way around our cowl, and you can see what we have so far. So I have to say as a side note that I really love these projects that use simple stitches. Like I mentioned before, they you can kind of cruise through them really quick, but they also have a nice simplicity to them. I really love simple, easy, kind of fuss-free projects like this. And they have a, a nice kind of simple, clean look to them. I think I was saying something similar in the last part of our series where we made the scarf. I just love the cleanness that these simple stitches give. Okay, so we're just working double crochets all the way around our project. Okay, so get a little bit more yarn. And just work all the way around. So once again, I'm going to continue working my double crochets and we will rejoin towards the end of this round. Now remember round two, the round that we're doing right now, is what we'll be repeating for the rest of our project. So you can really make your starting chain any number of chains that you like if you want it a little bit more snug or nice and really wide. Likewise for your height, because right now we've established our circumference with our chain. But when we want to build our on our height, it's going to be determined by how many rounds we want to work. So do we want a kind of a nice, short, sort of drapey cowl? work uh, less rounds. If you want something nice and tall and very cozy and slouchy, you're going to make it much taller, okay? So I'm going to continue with round two. When we get towards the end of round two, though, we'll rejoin. I'll show you how to finish off that round and then move onward from there, okay? So just keep working your double crochets, one per stitch all the way around your cowl, and we'll rejoin and transition uh, moving onward. All right, I'm just working that last double crochet of our round. And once again, like we did before, we're gonna count three chains up, join with a slip stitch to close our round. Okay, so here's our cowl we have so far. Once again, we're going to just repeat round two over and over and over until you get the height that you want. Uh, I'm gonna keep going with mine, and in just a minute, we'll rejoin, and I'll show you how to finish off your cowl, and I'll show you what it looks like with some more height on it as well continued and got some nice height on my cowl and now I'm just adding that last double crochet in that last stitch and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to close the round so count third chain up one two three insert the hook bring up a loop bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook and our cowl is complete now I went about 11 inches tall you can make yours taller as you can see uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video we only use half a ball of this yarn maybe even a little less so you could definitely get two cowls out of this ball of yarn for sure um, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna cut the yarn and then we're gonna fasten off uh, one other thing I wanted to mention too is if that you want your cowl to be much taller and have more slouch to it around your neck, you could use up some more yarn out of this ball and just keep going with your rounds. But I really like the height of this, so I'm going to stick with this. Okay, so let's slide this yarn out of the way because we are almost finished. So I'm going to flip the cowl over so I'm looking at the inside of it. And then grab your tapestry needle and we're just going to weave this end in. Okay, so thread your tapestry needle, and then we're going to go in the inside part of the cowl and go into those loops, those back loops of all these stitches. So just take your tapestry needle down through the cowl into some of those stitches and pull, and then go back in the other direction, and that'll lock that tail into place. Now this yarn has uh, a good bit of fuzz on it, so the ends will stay in nice with this yarn because of all these little um, fuzzies kind of act like almost like Velcro. It, it kind of like holds it into place. So, all right, now grab your scissors and just give it a little snip. And then where you begin, and I think I may have already woven in that end. If you have another end where you began your cowl, uh, you can weave that in at that time. I'm just double checking to make sure and I think I got them all so let's flip our 
Okay, so I hope that this cowl helped you learn some basic skills and stay tuned for next week. We're going to continue with our series and make an easy ribbed hat. So I hope you can join us for that. And also, if you haven't joined the Ravelry group, hop on over to there and join the community of makers who are working on some of these projects. And that's it. That's how you crochet this beautiful cow. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again.